and welcome to FPL Mate, your best move for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and I am free hitting in game week 29. So I want to share with you my initial draft for my free hit this week as well as go over some various options for this team. Guys, if you enjoy this one or find it useful, make sure you do drop a like, subscribe if you want to see the final updates later on in the week as well. Let's have a look at this free hit game week 29 team. So this team costs 92.4 million. So it is actually a pretty cheap team. Uh, but to be honest, there's not too much money to be spent this week with so few fixtures. But we are going to start off with a very obvious player. We're going to go through with the most obvious players and then go through to some more differential slash players that you don't have to have, but maybe there's some options there. So first of all, Son. He is going in every free hit team you can imagine. I can't even believe that anyone would go into this game week without Son, whether you are on a free hit or not. So he's going to be the first name on this team sheet. Fulham away. He is a player who has been in great form since his return from the Asian Cup and he is leading the line for this Spurs team. Also on penalties which is going to be very very useful for those FPL points and now playing as the central striker with Richarlison expected to be injured once again for game week 29. So Son really really a huge pick that you do not want to miss out on this game week. Let's move on to another player. We're going to go for James Madison. So yes, the double up in the Spurs midfield, I think makes the most sense. We know Spurs are probably one of the better attacks playing this game. We can Madison with his creativity, his set pieces, his long shots, everything that he does really, really is going to benefit him in this game away, for, uh, away from home against Fulham. So Madison straight in there. We've got that Spurs midfield double up. And I think that's a great place to start when building your free hit team. Which takes us to our next player. Another very obvious player is Ollie Watkins. A huge scoring player throughout this FPL season. And a game against a West Ham team that are once again struggling. Conceding two goals actually um, this game week against Burnley. Not good stuff for West Ham. They are tracking with some of the worst defensive numbers in the Premier League at the moment. In fact, only Newcastle have worse defensive numbers than West Ham at the moment. So it makes a lot of sense to try and attack that with an Aston Villa player. Yes, Aston Villa disappointing in their Spurs result in game week 28. But I wouldn't let that put you off too much. They did have a red card in that game as well. So that obviously is going to impact the, uh, the flow of the game a little bit for them. So Watkins, definitely another player you want to have in your team for a free hit 29. Next up, Tony. I think he is... Is another one of the most obvious players and I think once we've got these four players in I think these are the main four I would consider these players the main four players so maybe if you're not on a free hit if you have these main four players I think you're going to be in a very very good position but yes Burnley away is the fixture another team really really struggling at the moment and Tony is going to be uh you know on penalties you know doing everything he can to try and get a result there at Burnley he is that kind of player isn't he so definitely a player who has been very very reliable in the past maybe a couple of disappointing results results recently with some difficult fixtures that Brentford have had but this fixture against Burnley is a lot different and hopefully they are going to be able to get a result and Tony will be leading the line in order to do so you definitely would back him to be one of the highest scoring players in game week 29 which takes us to some of our more debatable positions we're going to go through the attack first of all so I want to start off here with Bailey Bailey against West Ham. Now, Bailey is tracking with the second best attacking numbers after Watkins at the moment for this Aston Villa team. So if we're talking about attacking a very, very weak West Ham defence, we want to go for the best attackers for their opposition, which is, of course, Aston Villa. And Bailey is second only to Watkins in these kind of numbers, creating a lot, taking a lot of shots on as well, and looking very, very strong in the best form of his uh, kind of Premier League career, I would say. Uh, of course, you could also go for Douglas Louise here. I think you're probably going to be picking out of those two players, Bailey and Douglas Luiz, one of those. Douglas Luiz obviously gives you the, the, the penalties. He probably gives you more minutes during the game as well. However, we do expect Douglas Luiz to play quite a reserved role with obviously no Kamara and no McGinn now due to that suspension for Aston Villa. So be aware of that. Open play, you're going to struggle a little bit more with Douglas Luiz, but Bailey from open play looks fantastic. But of course, the penalty factor is also always there. And the more penalty takers you can have in this game week, I would say the better, really. But Bailey is the player I'm going to go for for my team. Next up, and a lot of people will say this is a very, very obvious pick. I'm not quite sure about that one, but that is going to be Bowen at home against Aston Villa. Aston Villa conceding four goals. And you can say maybe that is part due to the fact that they did have that red card for McGinn. But... 
Aston Villa are conceding a little bit more than usual at the moment, and that's due in part due to some injuries. Kamara has been a huge loss for Aston Villa. Now McGinn as well, and you know, their defence isn't exactly in perfect nick at the moment either. So Bowen, could he capitalise on this situation, playing as a central striker despite being listed as a midfielder in FPL? It's a home game for West Ham, and despite the fact that I don't really like West Ham defensively, Bowen has shown some moments of intrigue recently, hasn't he? Of course, uh, you know, this game week maybe not so much but you know going back the last two game weeks before game week 28 he was getting attacking returns of course a hat trick in game week 26 as well which was pretty nice can he do it again against Aston Villa not so sure a little bit of more of a difficult one but I don't think Bowen is a super obvious player to go for I think there are some possible alternatives and I think this is maybe the position in midfield where you could potentially go for a differential now Alanga was a player I had a very close eye on prior to game week 28 because you know Alanga suddenly dropped suddenly benched from the Nottingham Forest team but his numbers are insane at the moment for the cheap Nottingham Forest midfielder so definitely worth a look at but he is going to be rotation risk going into this game week having been benched uh, last game week. But considering that maybe Nottingham Forest didn't put up the best performance against Brighton, maybe a Langer maybe comes straight back into that Nottingham Forest team. And I think he could be a really interesting risk to take. Since you're not free hit anyway, you know, you don't have to worry about the long term. Maybe this is the time to go for a risky Alanga. Another potential risk you could go for is Brennan Johnson. Actually, Brennan Johnson, in terms of kind of expected goals, expected assists, you know, those attacking numbers per minute played, well, Brennan Johnson beats all of them at Spurs. The problem is always with Brennan Johnson is his minutes and we're not sure how many minutes he is going to get is it going to be you know Timo Werner playing or is it going to be Johnson playing it's going to be one or the other with Richarlison out but it's really really a bit of a risk kind of trying to judge which one to go for so it's definitely a, a risk that you might be might want to take if you want to go a little bit differential on this free hit team Brennan Johnson could be a potential solution there uh, because obviously whenever he's on the pitch, he's brilliant and he's getting attacking returns. He's getting FPL returns. Even when he's benched, he comes off the bench and he gets more attacking returns as well. So definitely worthwhile looking at if you don't fancy maybe a Bailey or a Bowen, I would look at Brennan Johnson instead. Potentially, if you're going for a five-man midfield, Brennan Johnson may be an alternative there, which takes us to our final forward slot. Now, for this team that I've got right now, this is my current draft, I've got Morris. And Morris's numbers have been pretty good in the Premier League so far. Disappointing so far in Game Week 28, which of course is not finished yet. But Morris's numbers are decent. And we know with Luton Town... They can score goals. They can concede goals. Don't get me wrong. But they can also score goals as well. And this Nottingham Forest at home game presents a really nice opportunity for Luton Town to try and make some ground on some of the teams above them and get out of that relegation area. It's going to be a huge game for Luton. They will be going trying to get goals in this game, trying to win this game. Morris is going to be their primary attacking focus. He has been consistently recently. He's a 90-minute man. He's on penalties. He's the player who gets the most XG, takes the most shots, has the most big chances. If you're going for a Luton Town attacker, Morris is head and shoulders above everyone else. But of course, he is not the only option in the uh, attacking position because there are a couple of maybe slightly controversial picks that you could go as a third forward in this team. While Wissa. He's definitely a player I want to shout out at the moment. Since his return from AFCON, he's been doing pretty well. And actually, his underlying numbers are kind of similar to the likes of Tony at the moment. So you might want to consider going for Wissa. Bit of a differential, bit of a punt, but I kind of like it. Muniz is a, definitely an interesting one for Fulham. He's been doing really well recently. Even uh, kind of unlucky even to not score in Game Week 28 as well. And I know a lot of people have got their eyes on him for the future. So definitely a player you might want to consider going into Game Week 29, given he is has been in such great form, arguably in better form than the likes of um, Tony and Watkins recently. Well, maybe not Watkins so much, but yeah, certainly Tony. Muniz has been in better form than him. You could argue about Watkins versus Muniz a little bit, but if we're looking for informed players, well, why not? The Spurs fixture is actually not too bad for Fulham as well. If you're an attacker going up against Spurs, it's not so bad, really. And Timo Werner would be the only other forward I've got at the forefront of my mind at the moment as a potential differential in this forward position. So you could consider going for Timo Werner if you wanted to as well. But minutes risk again. Um, but, you know, when he's on the pitch, he always looks like he's going to be in those dangerous positions. Which takes us to our defence. We're going to start off the defensive line with a player who I think is the most obvious, the most nailed-on defender that I will be looking to go for this game week. And it is Doughty. Not for the clean sheets. Although, you know, knowing a Forest at home, it is a good opportunity for clean sheets for any team with Luton Town. 
the clean sheets are, you know, never really guaranteed. In fact, they are few and far between. Very, very rare that Luton will keep a clean sheet. But we are looking at Doughty's attacking numbers and they are fantastic. They continue to be fantastic. Maybe it hasn't always gone to plan recently, but in general, he has been a, a decent creator, set piece taker. I sound like I'm doing some kind of rap there, but I'm, I'm not. But yeah, Doughty, he looks like a really solid pick for this game week. If you're just going for an attacking uh, wing backs, you know, attacking defenders who you're looking to get attacking returns on rather than just relying on those clean sheets because with just four fixtures, how many clean sheets are we realistically expecting over the course of the game week? I'm not sure there'll be too many to be honest, but there is one team that I think are most likely to keep a clean sheet and that is going to be Brentford. So we will be going for Flecken as our goalkeeper. Uh, obviously Flecken, you know, making a few saves might be nice as well. Potential bonus points there, but Flecken, I think when we look through all of the goalkeepers right now, well, maybe you'd go for a Martinez, maybe you'd go for a Vicario, but to be honest, we want to focus on the attack a little bit more with the likes of Spurs and Aston Villa and, you know, even West Ham, Ariola. If you have a choice of any goalkeeper in the Premier League, you're probably not going to go for Ariola right now. And with a free hit, you can have anyone. So Flecken is the player I'd go for. Burnley really struggling for goals. I know they scored a couple against West Ham, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves because West Ham really are shocking defensively. In fact, maybe not even got a, enough press recently of how bad they are defensively because we've been so focused on how bad Newcastle have been instead. Um, but yeah, we'll be going for, for, uh, for Flecken here. And uh, yeah, I think uh, a clean sheet is definitely on the cards. I was quite impressed actually by Brentford's defensive performance against Arsenal you know you could say that they were just sitting back a little bit but they dug in deep and they are clearly capable of defending well when they need to despite some absentees in that defense at the moment which takes us to our next defender we're gonna go for Pedro Porro now you could go for Pedro Porro you could go for a doggy here as well both of their numbers underlying numbers are pretty similar at the moment I'm gonna go for Porro because I think you know maybe if Madison is not on the pitch for whatever reason Porro is gonna be on a lot of those set pieces which is gonna be helpful for him uh you know money is not really an issue a doggy definitely better value for money if you're just using free transfers but on a free on this free hit we're not really worried about money so we we're leaning slightly towards Pedro Porro but it's a bit of a coin toss at the moment between Porro and a doggy so yeah going forward these uh, attacking Spurs midfielders are going to be a little bit involved in potential attacks and Fulham for all their worth they're not an amazing attack in the Premier League despite the form of Muniz recently so maybe there is potential for a clean sheet though again wouldn't really be counting on it to be honest which brings us to our final defender and I'm going to go for Alex Moreno which is going to be again a little bit controversial because he was a player who was rotated dropped benched whatever you want to say for game week at 28 fixtures against Spurs well how did that go let's be honest guys I think Moreno there's no injury problem there he came off of the bench uh, at around was it 59 minutes so he got a decent amount of game time in that game he has been the favorite of Emery for the long term uh, whenever he has been available so I think Moreno comes straight back into the starting 11 against West Ham and one thing I do like about the Aston Villa left back and maybe this is a little bit risky but the fact that Dina is there at the club we do think maybe Alex Moreno, is he going to get subbed at 65, 70 minutes, which, you know, gives us a slight better chance of a clean sheet. You know, if we've got West Ham players scoring late in the game, as we've seen in Game Week 28, for example, and Moreno makes it to 60 minutes, I know it's risky, it could be a 59-minute job, but if he makes it to 60 minutes and then gets substituted off, West Ham, you know, go on and score some goals, well, that's okay. We've got the Alex Moreno clean sheet uh, banks. But of course, with the reason we would be going for him primarily is because of that attacking threat that he does possess, Alex Moreno. Another very, very attacking fullback. And you can see the three defenders we've gone for, none of them are dependent on clean sheets alone to get attacking return to well to get points in FPL so I think that's going to be a, a real key thing here um some alternatives potentially you could double up on the Brentford defense if you want to you know I, I've personally kind of try and hedge to my bets a little bit here spread between various different defenders but if you want to double up on the Brentford defense I think that is definitely viable as well Roslev the wing back is probably a good shout maybe Collins as well the center back he's probably got that uh, aerial threat from those set pieces but I think Roslev He's probably going to be the main man. His uh, his numbers look a little bit better than Collins at the moment. And his kind of bonus point potential is a little bit higher as well. So do like the look of him as a potential double up on the Brentford defence. But uh, of course, lots of things to, uh, to be changed between now and the deadline, I suppose. Uh, guys, on the bench, I've gone for Kaminsky against Forrest. Don't really know who else to go for. We've already used up a lot of our teams. And I think, you know... 
Kaminsky is not the worst. I mean, this fixture is at least pretty decent. Maybe you get some save points. We've got a Wobi versus Spurs. I know I haven't mentioned a Wobi yet, but I think he's just like that safe, secure minutes guy. If for some reason something happened in one of these games and one of my starters was not able to start, maybe an Awobi could be helpful to come off the bench without having to waste any of my Spurs or Aston Villa or slots, I guess. But I guess you could go for like a Kudus here, a Paqueta for the penalties if you fancied that. Those kind of players would definitely work as well as some of the other midfielders we've mentioned today. Um, Raw Slavy is going to be on my bench uh, for now against Burnley. And I put Mario here against Luton as well. Potential for Nottingham Forest to maybe get a clean sheet against Luton Town. Potentially, don't know. Uh, really, really lacking for defenders this game week, considering you can only pick three from three players from each team. We do have to scrape the barrel a little bit by the time we get to the end of our bench, but I'm not sure that's going to cause us too many issues with hopefully 11 out of 11 of our starters starting. That's the way we like it, isn't it? So, guys, we've got to put a captain's armband on one player, and it's going to be Hyun Min Son. Very, very obvious. The most informed player at the moment playing against this Fulham side, but I really don't want to discount Watkins. We're going to put the vice captain on Watkins. I think Watkins probably has the better fixture but I think Son being on penalties and Son perhaps being in some nice form you would say Son in general is the better football player the better long-term FPL asset when we go back over the years so maybe there is some bias there towards Son over Watkins but I think the penalty factor is a big factor indeed so I will be looking to captain Son over Watkins at this present moment but if you do fancy going a bit different to maybe some of the other free hitters around the lands Watkins versus West Ham is definitely a really 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 good shout still, despite their poor result against Spurs uh, in game week 28. So that is my team as things currently stand. I want to just show you it on the Fantasy Football Hub My Team Tool just to have a look at some of the score predictions and stuff like that and uh, how we might be expecting to uh, line up. Okay, so this is how the team is lining up on the Fantasy Football Hub My Team Tool. Guys, I definitely do recommend going to check this tool out and have a play around with some free hit teams yourself, particularly if you don't want to lose any team value or you think there's maybe a 1% or 2% chance that you will not free hit this game week. Sometimes it's nice to just go on a different tool and just try things out before actually committing to it in your FPL team, just so you can have a full overview of what things look like. So I'll leave the link at the top of the description if you want to check out the Fantasy Football Hub My Team Tool. Really, really useful tool that I use um you know constantly pretty much pretty much every day in my life in FPL so yeah this is how the team lines up it looks pretty decent we've got a decent predictive points we've got a game week rating of 98% so we're pretty much as good as we can get in terms of the AI predicted points which pulls numbers from those underlying stats that we hear so much about in the world of FPL so we could possibly get this to 100% if we tried hard enough but uh you know I think I'm pretty happy with this team 98% is is pretty decent there it is actually predicting that, um, you know, some of the other defenders could outscore the likes of Pedro Porro this game week. Uh, so maybe that is some food for thought there. Uh, potentially like Collins, for example, is predicted 3.6 points against Burnley this week. So if I wanted to kind of eke out every tiny bit of, um, you know, potential points there in terms of those underlying data, uh, maybe Collins would be the one to go for instead of Porro and, and have that uh, double up in the Brentford defence. And maybe that would allow me to go for an extra Spurs attacker. That would be very difficult to choose between the likes of uh, Werner and, and you know, Brennan Johnson. I don't think I'd go for Kulisevsky. Like whenever he's on the pitch, I know he's more nailed on, but his numbers just aren't as good. So yeah, this is what we're looking like I think this looks pretty strong and uh, yeah I'll be looking forward to having this team for one game week only to be honest because uh, longer term I, I don't think I would want this team but yeah it looks very very good for now that is the uh, the team how it lines up what the predicted points are Son has the highest predicted points of course uh, Watkins and Tony with the second highest predicted points maybe we'll talk a little bit more about this on stream tomorrow but for now that is the team Guys, if you enjoyed this one, make sure you drop a like. Do subscribe if you are new around here as well. Don't forget, like I just said, we are going to be streaming on Monday evening after the uh, Chelsea versus Newcastle game. We will be going live on YouTube and we'll be talking much more about free hits and what kind of players we might be thinking about bringing in. Maybe talk about some differentials as well. But feel free to leave a comment if you've got any questions or other player suggestions for a free hit Game Week 2019. But aside from that, thank you so much for watching once again and I will see you later, mates. Bye-bye.